Hello everyone and uh, welcome to a new discussion on this course which is groundwater engineering and the new discussion is water balance and its components. A balance is everywhere, balance is required everywhere in life also and in case of water also. But how to estimate, how, do, how can we know that what is basically required as per that area and what are the different contributing components, what are the you know the discharging components which we can handle in case of water balance. So, basically the law of water balance states that the inflow whatever is coming is a basically budgeting water budgeting as also indicated in the previous discussion that the inflow to any water system if we take say groundwater. So, whatever the recharge which is occurring in the groundwater system or areas equal to its say outflows plus change in storage during the time interval. That is what the water balancing is. So, in case of groundwater, if recharge is good, that means inflow is high and expenditure that means the discharge is less, then the storage would be in plus and budgeting would be in also plus, you know surplus budget. But if a withdrawal is more and recharge remains same, then it is a negative budget or deficit budget because there are changes in storage and storage changes are in negative. It is same like uh, the income and expenditure. If our income re uh, remains constant or less and the expenditure goes higher, then we are having a uh, deficit budget. So, same, uh, same scenario in case of water and especially in groundwater. So, a water balance equation a keeping this inflow, outflow and a storage can be used or can be developed to describe the flow of water in, in and out of a system and we are basically considering groundwater system. So, a system can be one of the several hydrological or water domains such as column of soil, a drainage basin or an, a, an irrigation area or that is command area also known as or a city. For a natural uh, be, a national hydrological boundary, if uh, any system which is developed or a uh, water balance is estimated based on a drainage basin or a catchment, and uh, then it is always better rather than rather than considering the political boundary because water doesn't know the political boundary. So it is always better to involve. A, a natural a drainage system or hydro, natural hydrological boundary rather than any other boundary. And a water balance can also refer to the ways in which an or, organism maintaining water in dry or hot conditions. This is how. So, here what it is shown here that the precipitation that is the input and a, a, a evaporation or evapotranspiration that is my loss. So, in case of and if there is this is S is my storage, there may be runoff. So, that goes out of my system. So, considering as a, a conceptual basin, these are the uh, things which are either uh, uh, you know plus values and minus values and plus storage. So, quantitative assess assessment of the hydrologic cycle of any basin or area is called water balance or water budget. And for each basin if it is done, then we know exactly what is re really required so that the ground water becomes available all the time around the year. If budgeting is done properly and uh, budgeting one and then measures have been taken accordingly. So, it can be uh, represented very simple way inflow minus outflow plus minus storage uh, change and that has to be 0 and this, this makes the water balance. So, all the components here that means outflow or inflow uh, of a hydrologic cycle are interrelated as we know in hydrologic cycle and are changing a dynamic of one component influences the other. So, if more precipitation occurs then our storage will increase and if storage increase our budget will change accordingly. So, for example, if uh, inflow is greater I have just given the example then the outflow and the excess inflow should result in an increase in the storage and vice versa also. If there is a drought period, less rain has occurred, our budget will go in minus. So, in terms of individual components, an equation can be written rather than just simple inflow, outflow 
and so we can involve a, a more uh, you know more quantitative way more parameters here that uh, and one by one we will also see where p is uh, our input and uh, p stands for precipitation q is a uh, basically these are the uh, inflow surface water inflow swi q is one of that component then uh, the another plus value which is coming uh, ground water inflow and then a minus values are coming in this equation that is evaporation evaporation losses or evapotranspiration losses then again minus q which is surface water outflow because surface runoff may occur so surface water outflow out goes out of my system out of my drainage basin and similarly ground water outflow so these are the minus value and for then for uh, changes we are having storage changes that is uh, here it is denoted as a delta so change in water storage and then one uh, a decreasing term accounting for error of estimation so we can also bring that so all this has to be zero and that is what the water balancing is so inflow uh, minus outflow plus minus storage that has been already considered uh, that has to be zero so we can achieve a water balance so in groundwater hydrology it is usually groundwater budgeting that is attempted rather uh, rather than uh, a common not a surface water scenario and obviously we are in this course we are discussing mainly ground water so water balance equation uses the principles of conservation of mass in a closed system we assume that our system is closed but whereby any uh, water entering a system by a precipitation must be transferred into either evaporation a transpiration or a combined and surface runoff eventually reaching the channel or leaving in form of river discharge and also stored in ground so that is these are the uh, that means the whatever has come will go in these forms so equation requires the system to be closed where it, it, it isn't for the example when surface water uh, surface runoff contributes to a different basin this must be taken into account so if we are working for surface then that one because a, a, a the surface runoff may go from one basin to another possibilities are there if it is a, a large basin is considered then it may not be otherwise uh, it may be so water balance can be used to help manage water supply and predict where there may be water storage so in order to manage water uh, overall water supply or a, a, you know a water budget in an area it is required that a, a equation water balance equation or all these parameters should be understood properly and based on that then we can predict or model that what basically uh, is uh, has to be done so that our storage remains sufficient and the inflow and outflow is in balance so it is also used in groundwater hydrology irrigation runoff assessment flood control pollution control in all the different fields where water is involved this water balance equation can be used it is also used in design of subsurface drainage systems which may be horizontal by using pipes you know ties drains or ditches or vertical drainage by wells and estimating the drainage requirement the use of a hydrological water balance and a groundwater model may be instrumental in this case so we can also bring more refined version of water balancing incorporating more parameters and a water balance graph shows levels of precipitation and evaporation like here so uh, like we see that uh, this is the groundwater in in between groundwater depletion is happening here whereas the uh, groundwater deficit is there precipitation is there and then this curves goes high and later on whereas this precipitation curve which comes here and in the month of say june july august september we are having a, you know a, a different scenario so likewise we can have so these curves uh, can give us some idea about the water balance uh, in a particular area so the making water available for its uh, many uses in an area to the users which requires tools and institution to transform it from a natural resource to one providing services 
and uh, the best uh, system which as I have just we are discussing is to find out uh, for individual basin what is water budgeting or water balance and accordingly and uh, that uh, uh, two types of systems uh, water systems exist one is water resource uh, system WRS another one is water use system. So, if we discuss uh, what is water resource system and uh, that means it, this in WRS a river an aquifer a lake must owe a water balance each, uh, each uh, unit here should uh, follow this thing and that for example, the volume of water that goes into an aquifer must be equal to the amount of the water that leave it plus its change in storage. So, whatever is the input what if the output remains same then and the storage will also be maintained, but if change in storage means uh, storage becomes less then budget is in deficit. And in co case of water resource system also the uh, under various uh, drivers such as climate change which is uh, talked a lot nowadays, but uh, effects of climate change should not be viewed uh, for in within a decade data. It is a very long term slow changes which are happening. Sometimes we get uh, biased about that uh, about the uh, if suddenly we get in one year lot of rain and next year we get less rain and we always attribute to the climate change. But to see this uh, impact of climate change in long term data or maybe 40, 50 years is required then only we can estimate and also under various drivers and uh, the population increase the population pressure is another thing and that we have been discussing the requirements have our increase and therefore, in most of our systems innovation systems the water budgeting is becoming deficit though our input has remained same but output has increased and therefore, we are having negative or deficit, deficit water budgeting. And this means the volume of water in the WRS that is the water resource system decrease after a decade that is inflow was less than outflow during that time interval and result is a deficit water. Another system which is followed is the water use system WUS. So, in general WS is a water construct of a user such as a city and industry irrigation zone a region or not a uh, geographic area. And uh, the systematic of uh, this uh, shows uh, that uh, uh, there is a inflow and outflow of that. Now, in a WUS uh, change in storage is very little relative to its inflow. And under a proper time interval, uh, hence the water balance becomes inflow equal to outflow, and that is a basically a say perfect situation, but it is rare to see. Like here, uh, that we are having now both things in balance, and different parameters are here. Another thing is that uh, uh, with WUS system, that instead of a river, it could be an aquifer that supplies water to a WUS as a main source and in case of groundwater, this is definitely true. So, let us briefly examine an urban water supply or an annual basis as a simplified example. So, it has a an eligible ET and a PPWS a piped network because in, in a urban city the, the water is supplied through piped network has some limited amount of water from groundwater that is the input in OS in earlier slide I have shown the equation and has a return flow to the main source that is RF and after passing through a, a wastewater treatment plant that RP type has various water path instances that is WPI such as leakage and water taken to irrigate green zones. So, all this will make a better estimations about water use system in a urban city. So, all these parameters have been now details about uh, these parameters have been given in this system that uh, like uh, VA is the abstracted or applied water from main source and uh, here RF is the uh, return flow and likewise all these uh, water balance of a system in a schematic are shown here and this uh, NR is the non reusable water which is which goes out of the system after filtration. 
So, what are you system you have seen this is the equation which I was just mentioning W A plus uh, O S plus P P equal to E T plus N R plus R F and R P. Similarly, uh, if we consider instead of a local water balance, if we consider global water balance. So, if, if somebody is working on really impact of climate change on water, uh, then they should think in terms of uh, global water balance. Because a, um, we may be having deficit water in one country, but in adjacent country we may be having excess water. Because we have discussed that uh, uh, out of this earth system, earth atmospheric system water cannot go out. So, it has to remain within that system. So, at one place you may have less water, another place you have uh, may have more water. So, you see that the uh, different uh, values have been assigned that precipitation if 800, atmospheric moisture flow is 316, then evaporation is uh, 484 and outflow is uh, 316. So, here this involves the 29 percent of the earth here. So, uh, like uh, if uh, completely in a uh, one inflow and outflow terms then uh, 1270 is the precipitation and 1400 is the evaporation. So, that means the loss is more in, in case of oceans, but in case of land it is little different and uh, it is not directly loss, but in open surfaces or surface waters like ocean seas or uh, big reservoirs this is the scenario is there. But as temperature increasing the evaporation part will also increase. So, that also goes against the surface water body. So, this brings to end of this discussion on about the water balancing. Thank you very much. Thank you.